If you like me and you write React code every day, you probably ask yourself one question really often, where to put my state within the component tree? And this is a valid question, because if you would like to write re really robust React applications, you want to avoid those unnecessary renders, especially for really heavy components to render. How to avoid them? And let's challenge one of the biggest myths, which is like React component renders when it props changes. Is it really true? Let's dive in. Hi. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Daniel Navorita. On this channel, I'm trying to show you tools and techniques, how to develop your career in IT and how to write better code in React. And actually, today's episode is really important because I think placing state within the React component tree is one of the most important skills which you can get as a React developer. And today I would like to tell you how I'm approaching this. I would like to show you how examples from React Docs and also my own ones from my personal experience. Let's talk about how to avoid those unnecessary renders and how to write proper React components. So as you probably know, as a React developer, view in React is function of state. So if state changes, React calculate everything new for you and paint the new screen. So actually all you have to do is worry about where to put your state and how to do this correctly to write really robust React code. So changes in state, they are triggers re-rendering in component tree. And if parents state changes, children's are also getting to be re-rendered. And I would like to show you one example about how to think about placing your state within your components tree. You have here example of app. You have one state, which is count, which is set by clicking on the button, yes? And count, state count is used within the button itself to show the number of the, of the current count state. Can you spot the problem here? Try to imagine the P tag, it's a component which is really heavy to render. And now on each button click, you are triggering re-render also for the P, for, so for this really heavy component to render. And to prove that, I create some simple app and you can see here is this button, which is count is zero and P tag we have here underneath. And I'm using React Scan for this. So if you click button right now, you see app is getting re-rendered complete. Not only button itself, but complete app is getting to be re-rendered. And where is the problem? And let's see what we can do with this. One problem here, which is really, really visible. We are using state too high in the component tree right now. Yes. Yeah? So if you can take a look on this state definition that the set count and count use, is used only within the button itself. P that so this P tag with really heavy component to render has nothing to do with within with the state, yes? So why are we keeping this globally if we can move it and make it more locally for the button itself? Let's do this. Let's refactor our code a little bit. Let's create new component with this button which has his own state. And now we are just using our button within the app. And after those changes, let's check how rendering is looking right now. So we have the same app, just new code. And let's click the button right now. Take a look. Only button is getting re-rendered. Yes, because changes in state, they are triggering, triggering renders within the components. On the first example, our state was higher. It was triggering the render for the complete app. But right now, state is much lower in the component tree only when it's needed that's why it's triggering only render for this particular component which is our button yes and this simple change can show you how important it is to asking yourself this question when you write react components where i put my state where the state is really needed i see this common mistake that people are trying to wrap all state in one huge hook which is presenter hook and they don't think about consequences of doing things like this because if you will put all of your state within one huge hook and you try to create like wrapper for your ui elements you have to think heavily about how heavy my elements are to render and how it will make problematic my rendering within the app if i have like all 
stayed a little bit higher within the component tree. So one thing which I try always to remember is like state is like private value. And I'm using this variable when components need to remember some state. And for me, state is like some information between re-renders. And one other thing which is helping me to properly put state within my components its rule which is telling me like state is private to components yes so if this is not needed in any other components i should treat it like a private value for this particular component one of the biggest myths which i see in junior react devs is like component re-renders when it props changes it is not really true because component re-renders only when state changes within it this component or with parent component and props matters only when you want to use like memoization techniques like use memo within your app then props really matters yes but in other cases take a deeper look where you put your state and how the state changes within the life cycle of your app you should only rely on memo as a performance optimization if your code doesn't work without it yes so find the underlying problem and fix it first and then you may add memo to improve your performance i see many people are starting from use, using memo within checking really where the root of the problem is lying because sometimes the root of the problem is only wrong state placement within your component tree little bit techniques of new composition for your react components it should already help to solve this problem and when a component visually wraps other components, let it accept JSX as a children. So this way, when the wrapper component updates its own state, React knows that its children done, don't need to be rendered, yeah? Because you pass it as an object and React can compare those two objects and they don't need to be rendered. So you can see example of that kind of component now on the screen. So we have card component which accepts children as an object. Within this card component, if anything will happen, children will be passed as a JSX from underneath. So the React will know that nothing happened within the children itself. So he will he will not have to re-render this children again. And try to prefer local state and don't lift state up any further than this is necessarily. For example, don't keep low, low, those transient values like state forms like uh, whether an item is hovered or not at the top of your tree or in the global state library this this would be really like ridiculous because on each mouse over of one of the components you will render the whole component tree within this so it's it's not good to keep state like this high in the component trees keep your rendering logic pure so if rendering a component causes a problem and or produces some noticeable visual artifact it's a bug in your component yeah it's fix the bug instead of uh, adding memoization techniques first so try to see where the problem is lying and two last things which i have to to avoid unnecessary renders is like uh, avoid unnecessary effects that updates your state in components. So most performance problems in React apps are really caused by chains of updates originating from effects that causes your component to render over and over and over again. And this is one example on the screen. You have some use effect has some connection and which using some room ID from function. So components is getting room ID and effect is using this room ID, but you didn't put it in dependencies right now. On each render the effect will be triggered and this is not what we want to have in this case yes so like unnecessary dependencies according to the use effect in uh, dependencies array this is really important and also another stuff is try to remove unnecessary dependencies from your effects so for example instead of memoization it's often simple to move some object or a function inside an effect or outside of the component because sometimes you have functions which are calculating some values, but they are not dependent at all on something which is within the component itself. So it's easier to move this, move this function outside of the component and just use it in your use effect. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something new about making better React components, putting state in correct place. I hope it will help you write better code. If you don't mind, consider subscribing. I will put more videos related to React, related to TypeScript ecosystem. Thank you for today and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.